Well, President Biden last week visited New York, touting the major investments in infrastructure, especially transit, right, that will help New Yorkers and those commuting right here to New York City. So joining me now in person in studio, Catherine Rinaldi. She's the president of both the LAWR and Metro North. So thank you for coming in this morning. Good to Hi, see it's you. it's great to see you. So it was a big week, right? Yeah. Uh, not only because the president was in town, but yeah. LIRR service now going to Grand Central Madison. Yes. How is that going a few days in? It's going really well. So it's been about a week now, and we're running shuttle service between Jamaica and GCM. It's this orientation service to get people just kind of used to the new terminal and mm. people love it it's beautiful yeah but a lot of people are anticipating some new lines coming in yeah, as yeah, yeah. well you said it's just the beginning when can we anticipate those new lines where are they exactly coming from uh, so we have a full schedule and uh, you know we expect that we'll be going to the full schedule relatively soon and making an announcement as to what that date will be shortly so how did you want to say how many total stops there'll be uh total so no, I, I, I don't want to say how many total <laughs> stops there'll be, but no but significantly yeah. improved service right so once the full service is running it's going to be a little bit over 40 percent increase in over Overall Long Island Railroad service. That's amazing. So, which is great for our customers, right? They have a choice. You know, they can go to Penn, they can go to Grand Central, depending yeah. upon where their destination is. They can go in the other direction. Mm -hmm. You know, get on the train and go out to destinations on Long yeah. Island. So it's it's really it's great. We're really yeah, it was excited about it. It was important. It was a big step. Oh, absolutely. Uh, first week down. I don't want to put the you know to a damper on it, but any kinks that you have to work out. I understand from a few people the long escalator ride down may yeah. have had conked out a few times. Yeah, I mean it's it's a big space. Yeah. You know, so Chairman Lieber has said a couple times that it's like the Chrysler Building on its side, right? So it, it's, it's huge. Uh, and there are long escalators that go down to the mezzanine where you get the trains from. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're just, you know, it's a big space. There's new systems, you know, there's like a, you know, kind of a shakeout period for some of the new systems, but, uh, you know, we're on it and they're, you know, the, the reliability is really important and we're completely, you know, excited about being able to welcome more people into the space. Absolutely. That's great. So let's talk about the other side of Manhattan right now, because yeah, there's yeah. also a lot of stuff going on there yeah, yeah. as well. The big project to bring Metro North trains to Penn Station on the Correct. west side. It was delayed, right? MCA CEO Jenna Lieber was out talking about it, optimistic, saying about seven months behind schedule. Is that timeline accurate, or, or are there any updates here? Well, it's it's still at a very, very early stage. So this is the Penn Access project, which would bring a certain number of New Haven Line trains down into Penn, and it's over Amtrak's right-of-way. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be a lot of close coordination with Amtrak with respect to the construction that needs to take place to be able to have this project go ahead on schedule. And that, co that coordination is taking place all the time, right. and we've got a very good, very positive working relationship with Amtrak. Um, so what General Lieber had alluded to, I think, at the board meeting the other day were, were some delays, um, but we're at the very, very earliest phases of this project, so there's plenty of time to make up those delays. Um, Plenty of, plenty of time to make up those delays and, and to have the project you know, be delivered on time, which is 2027. Uh, so many projects have been in the works, obviously, pre-pandemic, right? And the pandemic put a hamper yeah. on things, kind of slowed everything down. Yeah. But more and more people now are coming back to work. They are. But there's mm -hmm. also this hybrid model that Absolutely. so many are going to do. So how is that going to factor in how you run the operations, right? With some people now not commuting as much as they used to pre-pandemic. Yeah, I mean, there's no question about that. But, I mean, hybrid uh, work has definitely taken hold. So, you know, sort of the, the good way of looking at this is over the course of 2022, we saw a tremendous increase yeah. in ridership on both railroads, which was really great to see. Um, but you really see your highest ridership Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, right? People, you know, they do not work the same way they did on Mondays and Fridays. Um, but on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we're seeing roughly on both railroads maybe 70% of what we were seeing pre-COVID. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, that last 30%, we want to get that back yeah. as soon as possible. Um, but given where we were in, you know, the immediate aftermath of the lockdowns, where we were, you know, carrying roughly 5% of our pre-COVID ridership, yeah. uh, you know, we've seen tremendous growth on both railroads over the course of the last right. couple of years. So, so we're very happy to see that. Without that 30%, right, do you factor that into, I guess, the revenue and whether or not there, were, there will be fair hikes or service cuts because of it? Well, I mean, that's been one of the things that, uh, you know, certainly came out in the governor's budget address the other day that, you know, we, we, you know we've lost 30% of our yeah. customers, right? And that obviously factors into our overall uh, financial picture. The one thing that I would say is that, you know, we are committed, the entire MTA and the two railroads are absolutely committed to working as efficiently as we can, mm -hmm. finding efficiencies where we can. I mean, we understand that, you know, those economies begin at home, and we're right. very, very focused on trying to identify ways of doing our work more efficiently. Right. And so just to, to, to kind of zero in on that, because Chairman um, Lieber kind of pinpoints the service cuts for the MTA for the subway lines because of that. Do you anticipate the same for Metro North and LAWR cuts? Well, you know, at this point in time, we're actually, you know, we're running at a pretty robust level of service. I mean, as I said, on the Long Island side, we'll be increasing service by 40 yeah. percent once Grand 
Central Madison service goes, you know, the full service goes live. Uh, Metro North, we're running roughly 95, 96 percent of our pre-COVID service. And that service and the quality of that service is what having more people come back, right? So more express trains, more reliable trains, more choice of trains. That's one of the things that's making more and more people come back. And, you know, it's a really important part of my mission is to give people, you know, a safe, reliable customer experience where they want to come back to the trains. Right. New York is coming back, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Catherine, good to have you here in yeah. person. Yeah, Appreciate thank you, you so being much. here, Catherine Rinaldi. Uh, thank you for being here on Picks and Politics.